I like to break things in a bit to really give things a run through the paces as <laughs> so I try to see if tools and technology earn my trust. And NVMe has been blowing me away as far as speed, performance, CPU utilization, including my simple file copy test that I did last night. So if we go over here to the machine on the right, do a start run, and look back in history here, we'll see 192, there we go. There's the share that I used. So I copied these files over the network and I saturated the 10 gig interface by like 90% of maximum of what you can do over 10, G, 10 gig. That's awesome. I have a hard drive fast enough to push that with NVMe and the link held up nicely. What it also showed is that it actually does faster across the wire than it does to its local drive. So if you try to copy from C drive to C drive, or in my case last a uh, few days ago, D drive to D drive as I put on video, it's actually slower because it's reading and writing at the same time. But if we copy from C drive to D drive, works great. But guess what? Veeam endpoint backup, which I'm about to test, won't copy to a local uh, from a C drive to a D drive, but it will copy from the C drive, this Windows instance we have, over the network to a network share. Perfect. So I'm gonna get started with just simply installing Veeam endpoint backup. And the premise here is that I'm probably about to do the fastest backup I've ever seen. So that's been the theme here in Windows 10 all week. I'll be running most of these tests when Windows 10 is running as a virtual machine. That's coming up pretty soon. That virtual machine will be running under ESXi from VMware. Version 6, update 1A. And I'm guessing I'll probably get 90, maybe 80% of native speed. It depends on the NVMe driver and how well it holds up um, and how well VMware does with such an intensely, uh, insanely fast Samsung 950 NVMe M.2 drive. When I say insanely fast, I'm talking about incredible speeds that I want to show you here in my benchmarking results. So I've got the BIOS on both machines cranked up for speed. I've got the fan cranked up. So I've got all the uh, settings for, you know, maximal benchmarking, but you know what? Those only boost about like 5%. So every day with your normal Xeon settings and power savings and turbo on, it'll work fine. So there's the bias though that I'm on for the best performance. And the results are what's remarkable here. I'll show you ATTO. There it is. So Samsung specs say 2,500 for reads and 1,500 for writes. I'm getting that. I'm actually exceeding it a little bit. So that's the awesome thing here. I'm going to skip the media and external USB. We're not doing that. And I don't need the Veeam recovery media creation either. So this is the latest version of Veeam that is out right now. And it's now running in the system tray. It's going to want me to configure it and point it to a network share to get that to work. So I'm going to do entire computer. And you're probably curious like me, well, what does that mean? How big is the computer? And there it is. 144 gig in use. That's a little large. I think I'd rather keep this video real time. Ah, nah, I'll just have to time lapse it, speed up the clock in the middle. This is a decent, beefy, actual copy of a Windows 10 with some data. So never mind, I won't do an artificially small test. I'll do, I'll leave it alone the way it is. Local is wrong. I need to pay attention here. I'm going to go back and say shared storage. Okay, and that's the, uh, well, you saw that earlier. That's the folder I was backing up to or fo copying files to yesterday. We're going to use that again. Immediately that worked. That's a good sign. That means this one time, one off backup job that I'm running for fun here. It's ready to roll. Okay, so now I put my mouse down and I step away and see how long it takes. And what we, we could do here is do some time last, speed things up for a bit. And it's more fun if you have something to look at. So on the left, we'll be looking at the Ethernet and you'll see the C drive busy as well. On the right, I could fire up a little bit of Task Manager and show you CPU. And then here we'll just have, let's see, 
Not going to be much to see there, right? Other than, you know, progress. So that should be a pretty good view for you to look at. Uh, the first few minutes of a backup are kind of boring because it's not actually hitting the uh, network yet. It's just looking at the C drive, doing change block tracking, all that housekeeping stuff it's got to do. And you'll notice the gigahertz is already on, you know, turbo. Uh, the machine is cranked up, as I mentioned earlier. Okay, so now we just wait for this backup to finish. These remarkable machines, uh, the one on the left is at 120 gig of RAM, the one on the right, 64. This is the only difference between these Xeon D 1540 platform processors on a Supermicro Super Server 5028D DN4T system. And they only burn like 30 to 40 watts. Even under this load, they're going to be under 50. So that's pretty cool. And the backup is proceeding while I'm gabbing away here and already at 7%. Let's see what we got for the Ethernet. Hardly breathing hard. It's only using 20% of the 10 gig total it could go to. So already this is kind of fun to watch. If we look at the disk, we're going to see the same data rate as over here, right? The data is being sent. So that's our read speed. So I have to move the decimal a bit. Okay, I'll leave the display like this and then I'll speed up time. Okay, I'm not as uh, enthused with that view because I blocked the percentage a little bit. And maybe I just should show the disk here. Well, what's keeping the CPU busy, right? Let's, let's take a look. Do you remember Resource Manager? It's right here when you open Task Manager. We can dive in and see what the workload on the CPU is mostly from. It's from Veeam. So Veeam is hitting hard because we have so much I.O. going on. Normally with slower disks, I actually don't see the CPU this high. Uh, but again, if it gets the backup done insanely quickly, does it really matter? If it's happening in the middle of the night, does it matter that much? Okay, how about the disk and the reads? And you can see Veeam agent is what's doing all the work. So yeah, we know who's doing this workload, I'm just a little surprised to see it staying at CPU 100% so long. Oh, almost missed that. We're at 84% already. Uh, very interesting that the transfer of data over the gigabit was such a, a 10 gig was such a brief interval. And yes, I have only one cat 6A cable between the two systems. So it finished at a ridiculously fast, less than five minutes. Incredible. So you know what happens next, right? We mount the ISO and we restore from that backup. We, uh, well, me. It's not hard to mount an ISO because I've got this IKVM thing. This is the management cable. So I'll point that out. This is what the back of the server looks like. This cable here is a 6A cable doing the 10 gig transfer. These cables are just management, uh, meaning you know, out of band keyboard video mouse like you're watching me do on this video here. That means we have the nifty luxury of being able to reboot on the right. And do a recovery. So let me get that virtual storage mounted on the machine on the right. And I believe I already put, whoa, kind of messed that up, sorry. There we go. I already had the Veeam recovery media and I created it on this machine uh, earlier with the 10 gig in there. What I did discover though is the 10 gig driver doesn't seem to make the trip. So that means we're going to have to restore with good old fashioned one gig over a network switch. Eh, or I could just wire the tube. I'm going to go with a network switch. It'll be fine. But yeah, the speed is going to limit us a bit on the restore. Okay. So I need, do need to set up my network for that, for that to possibly work. So the backup's been done to a network share over the machine on the left. That means we are able to obliterate things 
uh, to convince you I'm actually going to be rolling this machine back in time. Whoops, helps if I spell that right. Uh, that folder is going to disappear, of course, when I revert this machine to an earlier moment in time. To when, well, to when this folder didn't exist. All right, uh, networking, let's see. I am going to have a network driver loaded just fine in the right, so I'm ready to reboot that while I'm talking. I can reconfigure the network on the left. There's already a cable plugged in to one of the one gig interfaces. It was just disabled under Windows 10 there. You were only looking at 10 gig traffic, as you saw. We wildly exceeded what a one gig interface could even possibly do. So that machine on the right is rebooting. And remember, we've got this thing mounted, this ISO. But I gotta pay attention that I still have to hit a key to boot off of this alternate boot device. I don't wanna boot off the internal hard drive. I wanna boot off this ISO file over the management wire, let's call it. And on the left, I do need a network. So I should be setting that up, shouldn't I? On the right, we need one F11 boot menu. Right there, right? And then we want this virtual CD-ROM thingy. And hit spacebar. And now we are booting Veeam recovery endpoint environment. Okay, so over on the left, we need a network I mentioned. And I think I left this cabled. If not, I'll need to head on down and plug that in. It is not cabled up, so it does not have a prayer of a network share working. So I'll be right back. Okay, we have a DHCP network now. And the 10 gig is still up too, doesn't really matter. But what we could do since, uh, well, 10, network, 10 gig network has no chance of working and it's private with a cable, we just disable that for now. So it's doing nothing. All right, bare metal recovery environment on the right. We run it, click it. Local storage, no, we need to pull it from the network. Now, I tried this low driver technique to see if I could pull in the Intel X552 chipset network driver, and unfortunately it just doesn't work in the recovery environment yet. I'll open a ticket with Veeam and maybe someday we'll get that. It's pretty insane to be able to recover a single machine over dedicated 10 gig pipe, but sounds fun, doesn't it? Uh, shared folder, here we go. Okay, so I need to know what IP address was leased over here, and now I know. And that was a network share name, right? Awesome. Entire computer, attempting auto match, and restore. Naturally, uh, it'd be fun to leave something informative on the screen. Got Ethernet going here. Okay, so the small partitions flew ridiculously fast. Now we're on the C drive. That's going to take longer. Now I'll just go ahead and speed up the clock until this thing is... Done. CPU load on the machine that's doing file serving duties on the left is minimal. Well, that took longer than I expected. Uh, I didn't quite capture a video of when it was finishing here, but if you look, you'll see, if you hover your mouse there, it tells us some stuff, and you can see the speed right there. All right, well, it finished, and we're ready to reboot. That also means ejecting the ISO mounted. Now it's just a normal Windows 10 boot. This is an EFI BIOS type, I should also point out. That means 
GPT type is, and it's available to, uh, I don't know, maybe a 16 terabyte boot C drive if we want someday. It's ready for it. You could just clone and, and do it or just grow the partition as you restore to a bigger and bigger SSD until you go beyond the two terabyte boundary. That's another nice thing. Um, the Supermicro Super Server. Uh, Windows 10 Preload that Wired Zone has actually does that. They've got EFI setting on there when creating your drives. The storage controller, by the way, is right here. That's the NVMe driver that comes right from Samsung's website. Mid-October date, so we're using pretty new stuff here, right? What I really meant to show you here was Disk Manager. Healthy. All right, enough of that. So yeah, it booted. And no, there's no more folder on the desktop. A little while later, and I forgot to show you something. How much data was transferred over the wire? Well, you might have seen that in the, some of the statistics on the Veeam recovery there. But why don't we just look at the actual folder called ISOs where this backup job got saved. Right click on that. Whoa, how could that be? Okay, I'm glad I looked at that. So we transferred a whole lot less data and that's what that would explain why so little went over the wire, right? Windows itself, Windows 10 is all that got backed up and one copy of this ISO. It was smart enough to figure out that these are all identical. So I actually kind of uh, walked right into that and didn't even think about it. And I am glad I showed that folder and gave you a little additional insight there into how this thing works, right? So if we look at the root of the C drive again, well, you can see right there, 276 gig, 196 gig used. But somehow, you know, compression doesn't do miracles like that. So hopefully you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching, and thank you for visiting Tinkertry.com.